well, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stellaris. I'm your Leo's Galvin, and finally the embargo is lifted. For you people in the future, anyway. I'm your Leo's Galvin, and I can show you this game now, finally. Yay! I've been playing this game for days now, and oh god, is it a lot of fun. You guys are gonna love this shit. So we're gonna go to a new game, and I've already kind of pre-created a race. Uh, this, this is a race I've been, I suppose, testing with. Uh, just over the course of several games. Uh, and each game I would tweak it slightly and try and create something more perfect. Oops, no, we want to edit it so I can go through and talk to you guys about it. It is the Palmyran A Empire. It is inhabited by Palmyrans. Uh, ship prefix is HMS. It is an art, we use arthropod names because it sounds, like this stuff sounds vaguely Aztec and that sounds cool. <laughs> arthropod names, excellent, uh, excellent Aztec stuff. Uh, but we'll talk about the race a bit here. Uh, this is one of my favorite combinations. Rapid Breeders and Agrarians. Uh, rapid Breeders gives 10% growth, or minus 10% growth time, rather. And Agrarian grows plus 15% food, which further reduces the growth time because they have more food. Which uh, makes for a rather good combination. There are some other ones uh, you can get that are good combos. Uh, Enduring, which increases the leader lifespan, and... Quick Learners, which increases the experience gain, means you have leaders who get to much higher levels and provide much more benefits. Uh, as far as traits go, you really should look for combos, I think, personally. There's a lot of good stuff you can do with that. You have a base of two trait points, so... And you can pick up to four traits, so Agrarian for my two trait points. I want Rapid Breeders, which puts me in negative one, so I need to throw in something like Non-Adaptive. Non uh, habitability is just minus 10% max happiness on a planet, which for the most part is perfectly fine as long as I don't uh, try and start settling desert worlds because my home world's an arctic world. So otherwise it works just fine though. The uh, initial ruler is Caleb and Tremia. Unsurprising. And I chose arctic world. This was really just a random pick for me. It doesn't really matter and you can pick whatever you want. The problem is if you pick a world. The two worlds on the opposing side of the seven world sphere are completely uninhabitable. So Arctic Preference gives good Arctic habitability, okay ocean habitability, and okay tundra hab can, uh, habitability. Pretty bad continental and arid habitability though. And you'll notice there's absolutely no desert or tropical habitability. So that's uh, that's what it is. Oh, uh, city appearance. And I've kind of tweaked out the ethics a lot. Uh, and whether or not I pick pacifist is a tricky one. Uh, I feel like I'm going to pick pacifist because it's restricting more so than anything else. And I like that. Militaristic is actually really easy. Really silly easy. Uh, basically, pacifism in this game is just straight bad. It is very restrictive. Although it doesn't actually show here, the things that you get from this are just awful. Uh, unless you have militarism and stuff, you can't do full orbital bombardment. Your people do hate war, which is un which it does say here, thankfully. Um, but more importantly, like a lot of decisions are just flat out locked to you about what you can do as a result of pacifism. And uh, yeah. If you don't do uh, light orbital bombardment, the uh, lowest kind that you can as well, and your people are pacifistic, then everyone hates you because, quote unquote, terror bombings. Oh god, I damaged the civilian economy slightly while I was, you know, sieging a planet. <laughs> uh, pe people are very picky about this. So whether or not you go materialist or pacifist is huge. And if you're new to the game, I would actually recommend militarist because it keeps a lot of stuff open to you. Uh, do not go pacifist for your first game. It makes things rough. That said, I'm also picking Fanatic Materialist. Because uh, this just is a straight up 10% boost to all kinds of science output. Which is lovely. Like, yeah. Just straight up 10% bonus to science output. And now you might be asking, well, what about, say, the Despotic Hegemony's plus 5% research speed? Is that any different than just Materialist? Yes. And I can't get into that now as to why, because that's too complicated, as to why materialism would be better than selecting, say, a despotic hegemony. But, we're going to be going with an enlightened monarchy. Because this is actually a really nice government type, with its edict cost reduction and duration increase. 
That's actually amazingly good, especially because you upgrade it later. To edict cost minus 50%, duration plus 50%, and core sector plants plus 2. Actually works really well as a, uh, as a government. One of my favorites. Probably the favorite government I have is the Theocratic Republic. Because it gives core sector plants plus 2 and ethics divergence minus 10%. But you need to be spiritualist for it. <sighs> Ethics divergence is huge. Unfortunately, I'm going to be dealing with a lot of it because of how I tend to run things. And we'll be dealing with the fallout in the mid game for that. And we've got a nice flag chosen. And then for our ships, energy weapons because energy weapons are cool. Pew pew lasers. Do I need a reason to choose in this otherwise? I mean, I really hate that missiles can be intercepted. And, I mean, limited range, they connect energy and high rate of fire tree through shields, but these get rid of armor. So, like projectile weapons and energy weapons are kind of uh, similar. Missiles of excellent range, but they are vulnerable to interception by point defense systems. But, personally, I prefer to chew through the armor. So, FTL method. Now, you have three choices here. We can do worm wormhole, warp, or hyperspace. Uh, I've been using hyperspace a lot which kind of makes things weird because it forces you to expand in certain ways depending on the hyperspace lanes. Uh, warp is definitely easy, but hyperspace does let you move around pretty quick. Uh, wormhole, wormhole lets you move around the fastest. Man, I'm tempted to do wormhole. Oof, no, we're, we're just gonna do, uh, we're just gonna do hyperspace travel for now. The part of the, or, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna do it, fuck it. Wormhole travel, but no one else is doing wormhole travel. Because that's it's really hard to do wormhole travel. But uh we'll do it. We will do it. And uh let's pick mammalian ships because they're made out of metal. All the other ship kinds are just not made out of metal, which looks really weird to me. <laughs> like, that's also kind of why I picked mammalian cities. It's like that looks metal. Yep, this does not look metal at all. The hell is that fungus crap? Avian City, I think mean, that was, at least makes some sense in Arthropod City. Uh, the cities kind of work. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, maybe I'm just boring that way. But you know, so be it. Yeah. So ship appearance we're taking mammalian because yeah, Musteloid is weird. Mammalian ships just look right to me. Uh, oh well. We're just gonna hit done here, and we're gonna crank it up, up to the limits, yo. Huge, 1,000 stars. We're going to keep uh, this stuff the same. Advanced AI starts uh, more or less just means that they get additional planets and, earn, and technologies and population and resources and everything. Basically, they are just lucky nations in terms of EU4 stuff. They, they start better. They don't get any actual bonuses, but they have better starting position than everyone else. They start with like five planets uh, that are somewhat developed. So... Uh, they they will be a huge challenge and will definitely rise up. All right. Otherwise, though, let us begin. All right. Begin as the Palmyra Empire. The first thing I need to check right now is our research tab. Okay, good. We have the New Worlds Protocol. Uh, this is a weird problem with the tech tree, <laughs> in that sometimes you can just not get a tech for a really long time. Uh, this happened to Marbazoo in his first game, actually. He was talking. He was like, how the hell do you colonize planets? You just research the New Worlds Protocol, dude. He didn't get the New Worlds Protocol for the first 20 years of the freaking game. And it basically put an end to his run. So, I, as a general rule, I just have come to automatically restart over and over again until the New Worlds Protocol is present on my tech research. Because <laughs> uh, that can wreck a, uh, wreck a run for you. Okay, so first things first. Uh, solar panel network worth it? No. Fusion power is worth it. And... Mining Network 2 will be worth it. Okay. So, fusion power means... Is, is good for building uh, advanced ships. Which will be very important in the coming time. And the New Worlds Protocol will allow us to research ships. Or, not research. Uh, will allow us to build colony ships and start founding colonies. And Mining Network 2 just simply improves our overall mining capacity. So, very good text to start out with. Now, initially we have construction platform, a science ship, a small military fleet, and a space station. And somewhere on the edge of the system, a wormhole thing. So, does, uh, how do I see the range on this wormhole? Again, I think it's away. Ah, there it is. 
So, the wormhole generator allows me to generate a wormhole that I can use to jump to any system in this circle. So, if I choose the Husk Squadron and I say go to here, they can. Simple as that. And they will teleport there almost instantly. That said, the science ship begins surveying the system. It's been a while since I've used wormholes, so it's going to be a little rough. And we have an air. Alright, okay, so let's have a look at our leader before we uh, get anywhere further. What kind of bonuses do we have? Energy cards plus 10%, not bad. And food plus 10%, good. And oh man. Fertility preacher, food plus 10%, that's great for growth. Speaking of, encourage free thought, which will improve our research further by 10%. It does, however, cause more ethics divergence. Which is going to be a problem. And because we're pacifistic, uh, people will hate us if we use limited... And we can't even use full. <laughs> we can't even use... Oh no, you need collectivist in order to purge. Didn't even notice that. Oh, apparently we can actually sl enable slavery. Uh, I don't think we really need a war economy. I'm probably going to set this to static. Mm, I mean, versatile ain't bad, but... I'm never too worried about it. We'll see. It's a tough call. First contact protocol will be peaceful. Leadership primacy is done. We're monarchy. We don't freaking allow it. Resettlement is prohibited. Migration is prohibited. Yeah, alright. So our laws are pretty much set up. Just only need a minor change. So. Right now our uh, little fleet's moving to the uh, wormhole generator. And is opening a wormhole. They will now just appear in the system. Which... Has a desert world, damn. And an arid world, double damn. Tch. Unfortunately, not ideal. All right. One of the caveats of a of wormhole tra travel is that you need to go back to your wormhole gate every time you want to travel out. So, as I travel around here and check out all of the planets that I can, we need to uh, have a look around here. Hostile fleet detected. They're fine, they're just warping through. No idea what the hell those are, but they're just warping through. They're not actually a problem for us. So, right now, our uh, military fleet's basically just going out to scout and try and find us a planet and an area. Ooh, not bad. Uh, build a mining station over top that planet. How are things in here? All right, you? What's our food production? Only 13. Yeah, we need at least 16 food, so. Uh, build a hydroponics farm here. Yeah, we'll keep that like that. Yeah, unfortunately a lot of our plants still covered in things like slums, which will require a little work to clear. Alright. And good. Ooh, six in our home system, not bad. Nothing on our moon. Alright, so... Situation. Encounter in Bakul. Enigmatic spacefarers. Uh, yeah. These are crystalline entities. Which is kind of good. We can steal tech from them. Damn, of course the Arctic world's guarded by all this crap. Ugh. Alright. So you've already traveled through and given me a base look at some of the stuff down here. Okay, we have an Arctic world here. Tropic world, no dice. Continental world, can't colonize that. We can only colonize Arctic worlds right now. Aha, here's a size 22 Arctic world. Where Thosk will be good for us. And a size 12 Gaia world. Gaia worlds are special, uh, special ones. They can be colonized by anybody at any time. <laughs> I'm alright with how that goes. Alright. So you've been building the mining station, that's fine. Good. And anything else in the system? system survey. Yeah, I didn't think so. Alright. So, it was... This, yeah. This one has the Gaia world. So survey the system here. And then... Worthosk will also need surveying. Okay. 
get to work. Now, our construction ship, on the other hand, is gonna have some work for him. He's got lots of, uh, lots of mining stations he needs to build. So, the survey of those two systems is going to be fine. Encounter in Zamatulin. We've flagged them as beta aliens. Okay. These guys appear to be space pirates of some description, possibly. I'm pretty certain they're not an empire, though. Construction complete. Xander's surface construction cube. A leader has gained a level. All right, good. So our scientist is... Yeah, all right. Situation. Good, and a tw size 21 Arctic world in Zamatulin, noted. Okay. Oof, a lot of habitable worlds around here. And a size 24 Arctic world. Well, this just keeps getting better and better. All right, we have a lot of sizable Arctic worlds and even a Gaia world surrounding us. All right, this is a pretty damn good start if I do say so myself. Have a world survey. Find one initiative. Log updated. Yeah. We have more than enough, uh, enough of that. Alright. Uh -huh. in construction of a mining network there to improve the production. That'll be complete soon. Alright. We're growing 4.4% a month. Good. Alright, we need to get up enough anomaly mineral production. Found. An anomaly, eh? Well, get to it. I could wait until he's a higher level and reduce the risk, but it's just better this way. Alright. Another fucking Arctic world here, yeah. An automated shipyard. Situation log updated. Ooh, that's good. Um, scientist present has science skill three or higher. Uh, hey, science ship. Oh yeah, you're only level two. You can't actually do that yet. All right, so the gamma aliens are another empire. Updated. Good to know. The gamma aliens are another empire. Mm -hmm. Construction complete. Okay, construction gear is finished in Alexandria. Good. Alright, we have 14 mineral income. Not bad. And you. Use the last of our... Uh... No, wait. That's... I always get the mining stations and the goddamn construction ships miss, m missed up because they have such similar uh, icons on them. Build a mining station on that. Good. System survey complete. All right. Are there any other worlds that are worth it for us? Well, I'd say, yeah, this is this is a rather important one to do. Darn, that's that's a lot of resources in that system. It's a darn lot of resources in the system. <laughs> All right. Okay. Overall, though, not bad. We got our mi initial mining stations up, and we have an astounding income of 16 minerals a month, which is pretty darn good. Unfortunately, it's going to take a little while for us. Yeah. The Delta aliens uh, are, or no, it was it the Gamma aliens of the Empire? I'm not sure. The one that was scanning has to be an empire, because non-empire aliens System don't survey. scan. So. Interesting. Uh-huh, an alien space station. Uh, this is inside the Gamma Aliens space. Noted. That could be a bit of a problem, we'll see though. There's another large arctic world here. So we'll, uh, we'll get surveying. Okay. 
We need to build up 350 minerals for our first colony ship, which is basically just the goal at this point. Try and gather enough complete. minerals. Good. Uh, exoskeleton's good, because 5% minerals are definitely worth it. We have 24 months to do that before our colony ship will even be buildable, so we've got time to kill. Researching the New Worlds Protocol about as fast as possible. Research complete. Uh, I could potentially crank up the speed. Yeah. We'll, we'll give uh, some society research grants. Which is another 0.75 influence, which is fine. Um, yeah. Alright, so you're level 3 now. So when you're done with that scan, I'm going to want you to uh, head over here and try and boost up the shipyard. I might just drop down a frontier outpost out here, to be honest. Although it feels like a waste of this friggin' thing in the damn system that I'm going to colonize anyway. Alright, administrative AI, yep. You will definitely want that for extra research speed. Alright, only 12 months. Good. Actually, you know what? Research that project now. Because I want the uh, extra ships. Because I'm going to need them if I'm going to take over this. Whoa. Okay, I thought the 112 was the station. The 41 is the bloody station. So yeah, I need the uh, extra ships that the shipyard will provide. I could also just build another Corvette or two, but they're pretty awful. It's hard to justify it. I'm hoping this shipyard will do most of that work for me. So that way I can save up and go for a uh, colony ship rush. If I can rush out two colony ships, that's friggin' good. Transmissions from Deeks. They appear to have successfully translated relations. Peace be with you. First proper alien encounter. Alright, so the D Zandere. Yeah, this falls just within their friggin' sphere of influence, it looks like. That said, we might be able to steal it from them. With, with uh, some forward settling here. Alright. Research two months out. Okay. It'll take us a little while to uh, actually build the colony ship as well. But I'm hoping to... Special project complete. Good. So, that got us uh, two new ships with 96 power. They're better than our current corvettes as well. It's for added bonus. Uh, are you guys on wormhole travel? Yeah, you are. Interesting. Wasn't sure if you if you guys would be hyperspace or not, because last time I got it, I was hyperspace. I think they just copied my uh, FTL, though. All right, things we want here. Definitely want orbital hydroponics. That's huge for colonialism. Okay. So, spaceport. Build. Colony ship. We, free thought. We already have people who have no ethics and people who have ditched pacifism. <laughs> Alright. So, thankfully, uh, by the time this colony ship's done, we'll be able to begin construction on a second colony ship. Now, this is a hell of a rush, I'm not gonna lie. Um, really forward heavy. So, first system we're gonna colonize is the Junus system. Because this is going to give us access to more than enough friggin' platforms. Yeah, like the energy platforms in particular are what I'm mostly after with this system. And then I think following that... That was a lot of good stuff here. Uh, what other system did we find that had good stuff in it? Another large arctic world here. You survey the system. Survey that system. Just go go surveying. All right. So yeah, we're pushing we're pushing a colony rush here because I found a lot of good planets early on. It's definitely not a terrible idea. It might bite me in the ass a bit. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. All right, 166. When you say certain regions of the planet, you happen to mean, of course. So, because there are Stone Age primitives here, uh, I have a problem. 
I now have two new policies. Native enlightenment. Native interference. Because I have a pacifist ethic, I can't just get rid of them and take the planet. Blows for me. Oh, that's one of the reasons why I play pacifist specifically. Is because it's good that it. I find it good that it restricts me personally. I, I like that it restricts me, in essence. Situation updated. Construction complete. Now if it can take that over. Hostile fleet engaged. Good. That takes care of that. This isn't in anyone's space. Nope. All right. All right, good. And we have a colony ship. Perfect. So, you guys are just going to go down here and quickly start colonizing the evolving crap out of this scale. The second that colony starts, I will gain uh, control of the system, and I'll be able to start building up a series of Situation platforms. I decided I'm not going to do the double early double colony. We don't have the uh, energy crash to support it. I think it's uh, more worthwhile to do a single colony and then start mass producing platforms in the system. Like I've got things pretty much on standby here. System survey complete. Anomaly found. Go for it. A great day for us. Yep. There. We're in particular after those three. Sins of a sun. The ionizing radiation from Repaga Five. Either been bombarded with nuclear warheads or quite recently been exposed to a concentrated beam of cosmic rays, probably nearby supernova. How a letter could ever be achieved is beyond science offer. Huh. Curious. Ooh. Yeah, that's. That's rough. Irradiated wasteland. Yeah. That's that's not good. Research complete. All right, well that's okay, I guess. Unfortunately, we're not colonizing that system. All right, and suddenly our energy shortage is a lot less of a less of a problem now, as we set up the uh, set up the platforms overhead. All right, and engineering research too. Eh, System survey the ion thrusters. complete. Anomaly found. Yep, go for it. Keep going with the anom anomalies if you can. When this meter is filled up, uh, the colony will become a functional planet. A remarkable vessel. Crashed cruiser. A shattered remnants of a cruiser-sized starship can be detected deca in a decaying orbit inside the atmosphere of Cordip Seven. It appears to have been ventured far into a gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer, only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided some interesting engineering data. A remarkable vessel. A bit of engineering data doesn't hurt at all. Six months until orbital hydroponics, good. And we're just immediately going to be beginning building another colony ship. Research complete. There's a lot of resources in the system. Which is good. Good, and that's no longer being a drain on us. It's still going to be pretty crummy, but it's a start at least. Uh, edicts. Oh, I don't have that one yet. Okay. So there are planetary edicts you can do as well, in addition to just the empire wide edicts that cost you influence over time. Uh, the planetary edicts cost you an initial amount, but, you know, are kind of. They, they, they last a certain amount of time as well. I'm, I'm not really sure about them. Some of them I use, some of them I just don't ever see a reason to. Uh, AI-controlled colony ships would be good. Monthly influence. Um, galactic ambitions. I kind of want that. Because we might be able to push uh, Worthosk into our borders, but no. Uh... Planetary unification for plus one influence and propaganda edict, sure. Alright, so we're getting all the energy we need from this already. 
And now, the construction ship can pretty much get to work on building the mining stations. Which will be of great value to us. Alright. I see they've already set up a colony there. Darn. Anything useful here? Tropical world. Otherwise, not really. Things here. Continental. The birth of space piracy. We should be better than this. Alright. Uh, situation log. Okay. Science ship. Yeah. Uh... Where's my science ship? You start researching that. And research that. We'll get bonus tech from that. Evading hostile fleet. The construction ship is fleeing a pirate fleet that just appeared in the system. These guys are kind of too wounded to fight, but we have to send them. Because otherwise they're just going to blow Situation our shit up. Log updated. Sublight exploration probes. Before we developed fast light travel, so some of the collections were dispatched from Alexandria at near relativistic speeds towards nearby systems. Scientists who develop probes natively include sensitive information about how our culture in their memory cores as a form of greeting to an alien civilization. It has now been realized that this data could potentially be used against us. We need to track down these probes before they are found by someone or something unsympathetic to our species. Station under attack. Yeah, they're, they're going for my station. Hopefully. Uh, Construction complete. Can wormhole in? Come on. Go go go! Please save the station. I really would like it if it was saved. Hostile fleet engaged. Eh. Debris. Looks like we might manage to get out with it intact. Ooh, talk about close, but alright. Okay. Nearly lost that station. So they came from the Big Hole system. Which I assume is currently filled with alien pirate vessels. <laughs> alright, so we have an Arctic world discovered there. An Arctic world we can't colonize there. An Arctic world that's in somebody else's area there. Continental Arctic. This one's potentially habitable, but tiny and thus not high on my list. Cordip, however, is a very good one. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't get very many adjacency bonuses for this in the long run, but... It's an early colony, so I feel like I want to try and set it down and make sure it'll be okay. And give it some base food to work with. Go for it. All right, now I've been neglecting my military a little bit right now, as we saw from the random pirate attack. I really need to set things up here. Okay, you. Survey system, survey system, survey system, survey system. Survey system, get to work. After you're done. Debris analyzed. Alright. Uh, 21 Arctic World, important. But it's so tempting to just keep building colony ships, man. Like, we have a lot of good possible uh, colonies out here. So you know what? Make sure you survey the system first. I want this set up as a potential colony now. Oh, we have an unemployed pop. Well, that's good, actually. I haven't been developing uh, the ground all that much, so... Mining network... Power plant... Yeah, I definitely slowed down a little on the uh, development of, this, of the homeworld planet. Not ideal, but it'll have to do. Build stuff, clear stuff, and get down to work. And try and get everyone employed and doing things. Good. And we have Ion Thrusters. Excellent. Alright, we uh, apparently managed to get a little bit of nano composite tech, which is not bad. Um, I think I might research that, actually. Now, we're going to get improved space yards. 
That's going to be important for us. Survey completed. Ends of the habitable world survey stuff. Excellent. So currently this colony is still developing. Uh, more or less. We need to get to five population before we can make it into a proper uh, thing. In right now we just have a, quote, reassembled ship, so, uh, reassembled ship shelter. God, that's actually really hard to say. Uh, which doesn't do us that much good. It's pretty bad. And in order to upgrade to a proper planetary administration, uh, which will allow us to build proper buildings, because if you'll notice here, we can actually only build really shitty buildings. Uh, and the actual buildings are locked. So, as a general rule, I tend to just let colonies develop over time. Star charts? Yeah, sure, let's try it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Although that's unfortunately out of my wormhole ranging, so. I also need to sort of think about that, because I need to start constructing uh, wormholes. The Jumass system may not be terrible for a uh, wormhole placement, actually. Among other things. Yeah. Can only put it near the very edge of the system. We'll put it here, because out of anywhere, it's like the least likely to get completely screwed. Yeah. Okay. I see, interesting. Survey's been completed. Ooh, three uh three food, that'll be good for the colony. System survey complete. Okay. Because this is a pretty sizable Arctic world here. Alright. Colony established. Research complete. Good. Planetary unification. Ooh, adaptive bureaucracy. Hmm. Or I should start working on tile clearing techs. That might be worth it. Need a cost reduction, though. Uh, yeah, we'll start working on mountain range removal and other things. Okay, not bad though. Good. Alright, and so this wormhole station is up and running. Which further unlocks us a lot of potential uh, targets. Good. So now we can actually get around the Zandanus Nebula. Or around these guys anyway, and potentially even cut them off if there's a good enough planet. <laughs> I doubt there is though. I mean, there's a desert? Ah, oh, I was hoping that was tundra. But sadly, no. Tundra I might be able to colonize in the coming days. Oops. But, at least this does extend our range. And the operational range is a bit harsh. But, alright. Hopefully, uh, once we get more colonies set down, we'll be uh, a little bit better off. God, colony ships are expensive. Alright. So, construction ship. I want two mining stations here now. Alright. And then once we get this planet set up, that'll be good too. Sure, let's, uh, let's survey the system as well. Unsurprisingly, not much, but there might be a lot of resources on these asteroids, which might make it a place I'd drop a frontier outpost. It turns this big signal from disengarded buoy belonging to one of our missing sublight probes in the Algebrab system. So I'm trailing away from the buoy trajectory towards another star source, and someone has towed the probe there for another Situation reasons. log updated. Uh, I mean, you should probably just leave. Like, save me that system instead. On the plus side, we found the military station. Or a military station for the Silver Fangs. That's good. Hmm. There's only other system. One of them has uh, the probe locked in a short range tractor beam. They're hailing us. On screen. Or a salvage arrest. Uh, we 
drive a hard bargain, but very well. 100 energy credits, plus one probe recovered. Every system plant survey data collected. Country is destroyed. Yeah, that's a weird funny thing about this game. In uh, a lot of situations, it still refers to space empires as countries. Uh, some stuff was totally copied from E4. Alright, so we recovered a probe. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay the money for it. Fuck it. Uh, as a bonus, we got all the data we needed out of this system. Which is sadly... Oh yeah, it's in our space. Excellent. If it's within our space, we can just set up a couple of... You know what? No. Don't don't build anymore right now. We, we need more colony ships. Let's keep trying to set up our empire here. I want to grow faster than these guys. They've got a colony here and I assume an outpost here. Cuz that's also really small uh coverage there. Alright. Okay. So, colony ship being built. And continued work is being done on the surface as our income increases. Construction complete. Excellent. Hmm. Well, those are going to be turned into labs. I think we have enough food? Yeah, we do. So we don't need any more food. In fact, we can actually lose a point of food, and it's okay. So you know what? You know what? We'll transform this into a mineral network. We'll lose the one food from the tile, but we'll gain uh, the minerals from the building. That's acceptable. Good. Alright. So... We could set up an observation post around this. Construction complete. Uh, right, it needs to be post Neolithic. Darn. Freaking post Neolithic. All right, so we can colonize the Arctic world here, and we're going to do that. Good. So we're already up to our fourth planet. Be darned if we aren't expanding quick. And we're about to get yet another colony ship, I think. Construction complete. Do I actually have another place that I plan that I can colonize? There's an Arctic world here, it's shite. Okay, where where is my military fleet? Oh, it's out of wormhole reach. Okay. I want some scouts out there. See if we uh, can't find a slightly better planet to colonize. Cuz you know, there's this one. Hostile fleet engaged. Oh, you guys just pop into the system and immediately forced to engage enemies. That's not good. Uh, get out of there. Retreat. All right, got to watch out apparently. Anything good in the system? A continental world. Situation updated. Well, this is in somebody else's region. They've, in fact, set up a frontier outpost around the star. And I can see why there's potentially a lot of good stuff in it. But that's fine. Alright, so the answer is no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's pull back a bit. I guess we're expanding in this general direction. Over here towards the Sejanus Expanse. I mean, this is unfortunately not an area of influence. I'm definitely going to have to set up a platform for that. Because there is so much potential research there. Problem is, I don't really have a good planet to colonize. Uh, how are you guys doing? You're almost fully grown good. You guys, you have enough food. At least for the moment. Should do okay. But this is probably a good time to end our first episode. Uh, I've forsaken any 
early military start, but holy heck have I managed to get enough colonies down. Like, this is, you know, the first 12 years of the game. And uh, we're rapidly expanding. And uh, our colonies are almost fully grown into good planets, too. At least one of them is. Alright. We have... Actually, not enough food. 14.8. Yeah, we need at least uh, 15.1, damn. Yeah, that's fine, there's that area as well. It'll do for now. It will do for now. But, so we can put another gate here. That This might give us better access to more planets out here. And hopefully a potential colony. We hope. I mean, if not, worst case scenario, there's, you know, a crummy 13 size planet here. Uh, I, don't know, I need to actually need a colony ship in order to figure out where all of the potentially colonizable planets are, annoyingly enough. But that's okay. Construction ship. Your job right now is to build a wormhole station. Here. There. We've at least got a lot of resources, though. I've kind of not put down a uh, many research stations, because resources are kind of running thin, and I'm focusing on that for the initial point. But I'm hoping that soon we'll be able to actually start exploiting all the research. This, this system in particular is huge. Because in addition... No, well, we can't put down a uh, observation station, which blows. So we'll get it over here, and then hopefully be able to scout out something soon. We hope. Construction complete. All right. Research so complete. we have an Arctic world here, which is awful, tiny. Continental world, nothing. Arctic world that we can't inhabit because we're pacifists who don't want to take a world from Neolithic primitives. An Arctic world there, which is potentially possible. It's really currently the main one I'm considering, which is fair. All right. Yeah, I should really wrap this episode up. All right, so we have access to a hell of a lot more stars now. No, that's out of wormhole range. All right. Get going. Peace be with you. Yeah, so we have another empire here. The Gliren Holy Cooperative. Interesting. That actually makes this planet look a little more important to me. And potentially this planet as well. Or this system as well. Because they look like they could be stolen away pretty quick. Right. Technology researched. Oh yeah, we need Paradise Dome. I've never actually built a Paradise Dome. I don't think it's actually that good. Yeah, I know it's a rare tech and I'm passing up a rare tech, but... Happiness plus 10% habitability plus 5% isn't a big deal to me. For a planetary slot? Yuck. I don't think it's worth it. Interesting stuff out here. Hopefully we'll come across something. Desert world, no dice. I knew there's a reason I never thought of that one. Every time we uh, jump to a new system, there's hopefully a chance that a uh, little world sign will appear. A world sign will appear if there's any habitable world, so. Tundra, not quite colonizable, unfortunately. Apparently... We have to survey it or something before it'll appear? That could be a problem. Let's double check through here. Make sure we haven't skipped any. Nope. There's only a few more left to go. Eek. Evil crystals. Not a fun system. Nothing. And a tiny ass continental world. Oh, hang on. Oh fuck. That's arid, not Arctic. 
<sighs> so close. And I'm pretty certain I saw, like, uh, an Empire logo appear here for a second somewhere. Did I? No, I guess not. All right. Darn, so I guess we have to go with a uh, crummier little planet here. I'd like to see about the call, but the alien vessels, I think, are going to be a bit of a problem for us, aren't they? Let's double check as to what we actually saw in the system. Because I've long since forgotten. I don't think I actually paid enough attention. I think my science vessel discovered it. Okay, so it's just a bunch of crystals. Great. Well, we can probably deal with those. I just don't really want to hang on to a colony ship because it costs friggin' uh, eight things. So we, we need to colonize something with this. And I think there's going to be... Yeah, we can't get out there. Continental Arid. I don't know why this one isn't appearing. Oh, probably because this thing actually has the dudes on it. I just haven't surveyed it and found out yet. I wonder if that's an exploit. Might be. But yeah, we're going to have to uh, send the science ship down to here. And just go with this. Survey the system. Get the colony ship in place here. Not exactly a great early colony, but it'll do. Good news is that's almost finished growing. Alright, so do your survey. And hopefully, uh, we'll find some good stuff. Alright, on the surface, actually not terrible. We'll take it. Colonize planet. Drop. Go. Alright. And there we are. Our fifth planet in 50 minutes of play. I'm pulling a rate of one planet every 10 minutes. This is a 1,000 star system, so... Not bad, actually. <laughs> uh, we're, we're making good time. We're making good time. And we've discovered some people. Let's actually have a look at them. The Ecratic Republic, they hate us. Because they're spiritualist, we're materialist. Uh, these guys fucking love us because they actually put an embassy in us. Uh, we're both materialists, and we're both pacifists. We have the exact same ethos, actually. So these guys absolutely freaking lutely love us. They have 18 people spread over three planets. How much do we have? 20 people over five planets, two, 12 over two. So that ain't bad. Out of everybody we know of, we're currently in the lead for population. As uh, we work to grow quickly. One of the reasons why I'm so focused on expansion, by the way, is because wormholes make expansion trickier. It's a, it's a lot harder to expand with wormholes, because I can't just go around and all over the place and just drop colonies wherever the bloody hell I want to. So it takes a little bit of work. But we'll get it, don't worry. We will get it. Yeah, I'm thinking I, I want to get this system surveyed at some point as well. Anyway, with this, uh, I'd like to bid everyone farewell and hope that you'll tune in for episode two of Stellaris, in which the Palmyrian Empire will continue to grow, because we're actually doing pretty well on the growth front. This was an excellent start. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been your lovely, lovely host, Kelvin, signing off.